Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. In this daily editorial, we are getting an update from GMG, Graphene Manufacturing Group, traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol GMG. I'm chatting with Craig Nickel, founder and CEO. Now, Craig, last time I had you on the show, we were talking about a new program in partnership with the University of Queensland to develop some of these graphene aluminum ion batteries now we talked about that just a couple weeks ago and earlier this week on may 11th we have some news on some of the performance of these batteries now these are coin cell prototypes there is a table within this news release that the main categories being energy density power density and calculated time to fully charge an average phone battery you're highlighting the batteries that you guys are making here is really winning out on all of these categories. But what's important to take away from some of this data, especially for people that don't quite understand the nuances of what you're actually testing for in terms of batteries? Yeah, thanks, Corey. It's um, really good to be back on. Uh, the, the batteries are very complex, and I think it um, normally takes a whole page to specify what a battery um, can do. Uh, uh, probably a, a little known fact is the faster you charge a battery, generally the less energy it will store. And and I think, therefore, people can get a bit sus- get sp- suspicious about fast charging batteries because I want to know how, how much energy it can store. And I think the, the, the thing that this uh, pr- uh, press release on our performance for our battery tech um, demonstrates is that um, it is a very fast charging battery. Um, uh, prototypes uh, that we've done, um, but it actually also has a quite high energy density compared to uh, industry norms or um, you know, relatively competitive uh, energy densities. Uh, and that's, I think, the, uh, the important point to take from this is that um, we have now um, uh, you know, testing data which shows it's, uh, it's charging somewhere 60 times faster than a normal lithium-ion battery. And, and it still has a very comparative energy density, so it can hold that charge even though it's being charged very, very fast. And that's a game changer in the industry, um, particularly when this is not made out of lithium, there's no cobalt, there's no manganese, there's not even copper in this battery. It's just our graphene, which we crack from natural gas, and, and aluminium. And, and that is a huge game changer for the supply chain as well. So there's a few game changes in this, but the one point that we wanted to make sure and that was clear in this table was we did a calculation of how long it would normally take to charge a phone battery. And this is a phone battery that we'd normally see in your, your common um, personal phone. And it's, it's, you're looking at somewhere between a minute to five minutes. Depends on how fast you want to charge it. And then you still have very good energy density. So that means it will last still a very quite long time, even with that fast charging. Okay, so Craig, clearly the importance here is on the speed of charging for these batteries. But when you are charging them, do you need any certain hardware or systems? Yeah, I think that that will be something to work through. Obviously, uh, the, the more, the faster, the, or the bigger the current, the, in the end, what you need to do is have a bigger a bigger wire that's charging it. Um, So, you know, eventually, you know, we see this battery, you know, we we hope to to have it. So it will then, it will, the battery will no longer be the critical point that you can't charge past. It'll start to be the the point that um, it can take whatever the the infrastructure, the the power plug, the, 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 the fast car charger can charge and then more. And then you're back on to, well, how fast can we charge it reliably with, with the phone charging cable or with the fast car charger? And, and that, that means it's, you know, it's no longer the, the piece of equipment which is holding back the charging. That's what's really exciting about this. It, it puts charging a battery um, in, in a very different space, a very different space, which is, which is really quite exciting. When it comes to further tests, these are very early on tests, right? As I mentioned, you guys just came up with that partnership with the University of Queensland at about the middle of April. What further developments do we need to look out for for these batteries? Yeah, it's a great, great question. Great point. So we're working only on a cathode material in a coin cell 
Um, so the first thing we're going to work on is our coin cell commercial prototypes, and we aim to, to, to bring them to, to people, to, to test, to customers, hopefully in the, you know, in the next six months. That's really what we're going to do. And these are, these are you know, directly replaceable coin cells. So your previous lithium ones that you would put in your various different personal appliances, we'll, we'll put ours in. Um, and there's some work to be done to get to that. You know, um, you know currently our, our voltage is 1.7 volts, which is your standard uh, differential uh, voltage that you get when you make an aluminium ion battery. So we're going through some, some work to, to get that up to out at around three and a half to four volts. And we've got um, we've got some good good work going through that. That will then enable people to test them and and, and swap them out, um, see how fast they can charge, and and then see how how long they can they can last comparative to the current lithium um, ones in the market. Now, once once we're, we're once we're there with that, and we get customer results back, that'll really then give us some more um, data to come out on on this. Um, because it will clearly show what we can do and like-for-like like comparison in the market, uh, which, as I said, is is quite complex for batteries. You you got to do a lot of testing to really make sure all of your battery information is correct, um, and it can be comparative in, in and make sense. So that's what we're going through over the over the next six months. Now, getting a product for consumer testing. What's that going to look like? If your goal is by the end of the year, it sounds like you still have a lot of testing to do and development. What needs to happen then to make that time frame work? Yeah, well, we're, we're chewing off hopefully a, a, a sector which is a bit easier to, to get to. Um, so coin cells are pretty easy to replace. Um, there's a lot of problems with existing coin cells. Lithium coin cells, for instance, um, can't be flown around in planes, especially in Australia. In some international routes, you might be able to do it, but but you can't put them in bulk uh, containers in planes. You you would need to ship them um, because of the the risk of of a fire um, and safety hazards. So there's certainly some some demand for what we could do in this space for these types of batteries. And of course, what we're saying is we, we'll be having some commercial prototypes available in six months. Which we think is is fine. We we've got team focused on this, and we have other um, people coming in from industry to help us um, do the testing. And then what we'll then do is once we've got that, we'll come out with well, this is where our performance data is, and then you know we'll 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 go through that with customers. So we we and then hopefully we'll we'll then be able to go into some kind of production facility. If if that if everything measures up on on multiple fronts, the, obviously once you've got that working, there is a huge um, that there will be I'm sure a huge push to say well what else from the company what else can we put this into, um, for instance laptops or phones um, and and others all sorts of personal appliances, and that is just a process of making a pouch pack. So a pouch pack is a folded cathode and electrode material. And it's then put folded together, and uh, um, it's the same technology that's sitting in a coin cell, except it's much larger and therefore carries more, um, more, more, more energy. And and then that would then be the next step. We would have that tested by our, you know, some potential customers, and see what people think of that. Um, and and then that would then spur another space for us to show more performance data. Because performance data for um, pouch packs is actually different to performance data for coin cells. It's you've just got different weights and you've got different packaging, um, and you've got different charging requirements and energy requirements. So it's it's going to be a busy, um, and that'll take another eighteen months or so. So by the end of twenty twenty two, we aim to have a commercial prototype out there for some kind of uh, pouch pack. We we got to define what that will be. So we've got a busy eight, one and a half, one and a half years, um, uh, to say the least. But we, we're really excited about it, and we've got the team and and the focus and and, and the knowledge. Um, and so you know, this 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 really does look like a, a fantastic one and a half years to, um, in, in front of us to do a, some really good work. All right. So in summary, you guys are very busy here. And it sounds like initially you're moving forward with these coin cell prototypes to get them into consumer testing. 
prove out that this works, right? That it can charge quickly, that it does have the energy capacity. And then you can move into these other styles of batteries. Break down what the news flow looks like here for the company in the near term for investors to follow along and make sure that you guys are progressing along these timelines. Yeah, I think that's um, that's a very good point. What what could investors see from us? And really, you know, we've committed to to commercial prototypes um, being tested and um, it, within six months, so by the end of um, you know, basically 2021, December 2021, that would... Uh, that would clearly be the first place when we should be saying this is our data for all the performance testing we've got for these batteries in all sorts of circumstances. And that's what we're currently you know, on the way through. Now, the, the, the space around pouch packs is going to be a bit more interesting because coin cells are a defined size and, and there's some pretty basic ones that you could pick and you could use. Pouch packs, though, you kind of need to define. They're very variable. So you could have different sizes, shapes, and um, um, watt hours. And so the the space there is actually trying to work with someone who is um, keen to step forward and, and say, I, I, I would like to work with you on a pouch pack. So it's, it's a bit of two hands there. We do need two hands clapping um, for the pouch pack. But that would probably be another step where we could come out and say, you know, we're, we're trying to work with, with these people or these people to kind of say where this pouch pack is because it has to meet a certain target um, application. And then once that's actually available for um, testing and the data is being obtained, then you would be coming out and saying um, that we have some um, clear performance data on a pouch pack, which... Um, as I said, is very specific to the application, but it would give a certainly a lot more understanding about this battery at, at scale as well, because the pouch packs have much greater scale opportunity. Okay, Craig, I appreciate the update. If anybody has any follow-up questions for Craig regarding mostly these advancements in the battery technology, please email me, fleck at kereport.com. I will get those answered for you. And we will follow up as more news hits the market and also to answer those questions on how this is all progressing. Craig, I appreciate the update. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Corey.